someone explain to me how Alexa already knows what the storm's going to do. This is the crazy stuff with AI and everything that's going on. Listen to this. Alexa, what kind of hurricane was Hurricane Milton? From Fandom.com, Hurricane Milton was an extremely powerful Category 5 hurricane that caused widespread damage across its path. Why? Uh, Milton is now a hurricane. We said earlier this morning that it was possible that could happen today. Some said it might happen tomorrow, and it's already happened. And so it's strengthened. Has it moved that far? Since the morning, it's going to start picking up the pace there as it comes closer to Florida before it makes landfall, likely sometime on Wednesday afternoon. The forecast currently calls for the storm to reach potentially a Category 4. You know, they were talking about climate change yesterday, and now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right. Lasers now could one day manipulate rain and lightning. CBS This Morning contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at City College of New York. Professor, nice to see you. Extraordinary seeing Al Gore and Bill Clinton there together with Charlie, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah, they did not get into this discussion, no. though. <laughs> but it is fascinating. I mean, lasers, really, to change the weather? That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. But this is experimental. It's experimental. However, in the laboratory so far it works. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, and these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. Any, go ahead. Well, I, I, this is fascinates me in part because, too, I remember reading the stories that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used this after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. I mean, w did those really work then? We have some of these capabilities now? Inconclusive. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons. Governments have been playing with, with this to. thing. Alleged to. Alleged to, right. Yeah. Now, we realize that for decades now, these governments have been alleged to have experimented with weather control, but nothing conclusive. This time we're bringing in the laws of physics rather than simply uh, waving our hands and uttering mumbo jumbo. <laughs> We're actually using trillion watt lasers yeah. now. And in the laboratory, sure enough, they precipitate rain out of water vapor. Sure enough, you can actually bring down electricity yeah. down, the, down the beam. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI. A method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. An SAI program could limit global temperature increases, reducing some risks associated with higher temperatures and providing the world economy additional time to transition from fossil fuels. This process is also relatively inexpensive. The National Research Council estimates that a fully deployed SAI program would cost about $10 billion yearly. As promising as it may be, moving forward on SAI would also raise a number of challenges for our government and for the international community. On the technical side, greenhouse gas emission reductions would still have to accompany SAI to address other climate change effects, such as ocean acidification, because SAI alone would not remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. On the geopolitical side, the technology's potential to alter weather patterns and benefit certain regions and is mainly, I mean, the, the frightening thing about this, and I know that there's been many, many tests now that are showing accumul uh, accumulations of, of aluminum, even in places in very, very remote parts of the earth, I mean, in the soils. And it's hard to explain why that would happen. And, and people should know this, that aluminum um, was never a 
a free molecule prior to the era. Aluminum, uh, all the aluminum on Earth is bound into silicate. And so it wasn't like there are many, many other metals like iron, et cetera, that are in the seawater and that, um, and zinc and magnesium, et cetera, that, um, that, are, uh, that are free and biologically available. But aluminum was, was really not biologically available prior, prior to the, and particularly the airline industry. Um, when aluminum smelting became uh, very, very widespread. And then, of course, the aluminum got into our cookware, it got into uh, aluminum cans, it got into, um, you know, food storage, etc. And we now know that aluminum gets stored in the brain, it crosses the blood-brain barrier, it has a high association with Alzheimer's and with many, many other brain injuries and other injuries. And, um, and so it's kind of frightening to think that somebody may be putting a large amounts of bioavailable aluminum into the environment, um, spraying it in, in microscopic particulates uh, from airplanes. You're completely correct on every point. Thank you for bringing that point up, that aluminum does not exist naturally in the environment in free form, always bonded to other elements. And we now have lab tests from around the world, all of which contain some level of aluminum. That's what brought me into this fight. When I began to lose massive amounts of my solar power uptake, I, I spent my whole life trying to get out of the smoggy Southern California, moved to the Pacific Northwest, built this off-grid home. I was losing huge amounts of my solar power uptake from whatever these aircraft were emitting, which I knew could not be condensation, not to block 70 or 80% of my solar PV uptake on some days. And that doesn't mean there's an 80% reduction in overall light. It just means you, you have to have direct sunlight for solar panels to function. I began to test my precipitation, did not want to find that primary element of aluminum, but I did. I continued to test my precipitation. In the course of 18 months, the amount of aluminum in a single precipitation event went from 7 ppb parts per billion to 3,450 ppb in a single rain event. That's highly toxic rain. So much aluminum is falling in our region of Northern California. It has altered soil pH values from 10 to 12 times toward alkaline. Rain pH should be about 5.6, 5.6 based on atmospheric carbon loading. We're seeing now 6.6, 6, 6, 8 in some cases. We're testing the individual precipitation events, the precipitation that is very high in aluminum, it's actually pushing the pH value toward neutral. And the in regard to where else that might be coming from, because that's a question people ask, maybe there's some industry across the street from me or so forth. We know from CARB, California Air Resources Board, that when they're testing from the aerosols from China, Japan, Asia, there's nothing between us and them. And CARB studies do not show aluminum migrating across the ocean. Mercury can, of course, because it converts to a gaseous state, but not aluminum. So where is that much metal coming from? And a final note, your viewers, your followers, can watch the world's most recognized geoengineer, Dr. David Keith, who works for Mr. Gates, works with Mr. Gates, works for Harvard as well. It's about the fact, an uncomfortable fact, but it is a fact that we have the technical ability to do this. They are all fast acting, they are cheap, and they are fundamentally imperfect. They are the problems of how you control something where an individual country can have tremendous leverage over the whole planet's climate, and where there are winners and losers in ways that, that really could be unpredictable. And I mean, not to frighten you, but I think you can imagine scenarios that lead to Bill Gates is now backing something called sun dimming technology that would reflect sunlight out of the Earth's atmosphere, causing global cooling. Ooh, that's not fraught with risks. <laughs> you thought gain of function research on pathogens was dangerous. Try that. But that doesn't stop Harvard University. Its scientists are testing that technology by spewing calcium carbonate dust into the atmosphere. And well, the World Economic Forum's looking into it. We've got a tweet from the Daily Wire. Should be no risk. World Economic Forum pushes space bubbles to block out the sun and stop climate change. So just to give you the range, um, it's now 600 uh, highly educated people uh, located around the world. This can be profound.
profoundly overwhelming, this subject, but if you break it down to what you can do on every single day, any given day, pass on credible data from a credible source, that's how you wake people up. Running out in the street and ranting and pointing at the jet spraying, that's, again, it's not condensation. This is a sprayed particulate dispersion. And, and on that note, by the way, all military tankers, all U.S. commercial carriers are, have high-bypass turbofan jet engines. That's a jet-powered fan, which is nearly incapable of producing any condensation trail except under rare circumstances. So we're seeing sprayed particulate dispersions. The way you wake people up, pass on credible data. We we offer printed materials at geoengineeringwatch.org for at or below our cost. Very effective at waking people up. A picture's worth a thousand words, or you can share the links for free from our site. But pass on credible data, plant the seed, move on. Allow it to, time to sprout, because this is a very overwhelming subject. But if, you keep, if we keep doing that and we reach a critical mass of awareness, we'll cause a shockwave around the world. People participating will know what they're participating in, specifically our military brothers and sisters that are being told they're doing something benevolent when it's anything but. We have to reach a critical mass of awareness. All of us needed to do that. What you're about to hear is perhaps one of the most vital information out there to this day, at least in my opinion, on geoengineering. Coming from the man who is actually participating in this geoengineering program. Take a listen. You could actually spray sulfuric acid in the stratosphere, 20 kilometers over our head, and use that to stop the planet warming up in a okay, kind wait, of ugly you, tech fix. You could, you could spray something into the atmosphere to yes. change... Okay, spray okay. Spray pollution into the atmosphere to stop it warming. How do you do this? You yeah. start with a fleet of modified business jets and say 20,000 tons of sulfuric acid uh -huh. into the stratosphere every year, uh -huh. and each year you have to put a little more, mm -hmm. and this doesn't, in the long run, mean that you can forget about cutting emissions. We will need to rein in No, emissions. we'll get to it eventually. Just in the meantime, we're shrouding the earth in sulfuric acid. So people are terrified about talking about this because uh -huh. they're scared that it will prevent us cutting emissions. Right, and also that it's sulfuric acid. We put 50 million tons of sulfuric acid in the air now as pollution. And million people a year worldwide. Okay, but it'll be better if we put more in. We're talking about 1% of that. 1% more would just... 10,000 more people. You can do math. What happens to the sulfuric acid after it's sprayed? Does it just stay up there? No, it rains down, okay. but it's a tiny addition to okay. what we're already doing. Is there any possible way this could come back to bite us in the end? It actually turns out to be an old idea. This really? was known since President Johnson. You ever look at those planes up there? They have contrails behind them? Maybe all those planes with the contrails, maybe they're actually spraying chemicals into the atmosphere right now and Uncle Sam isn't telling us. Seems extremely unlikely. The that fact the United the government... States is not telling something to its citizens? That seems extremely <laughs> likely to me. This book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praises to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rechak Wurash, double honor to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone, peace and salutation to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth in sincerity. May Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Racha Kuras Brakdam to use the quantum while Akim Wakwaf in the elders, you brothers, you sisters, the hopeful elect out there laboring, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, giving diligence to make your calling and election sure. And of course, keeping faith in Heavenly Father Yahweh and His beloved Son, our Lord and our Savior, our King, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach in His last days and His perilous times that we are living in. This brother Shai Ban Yashala. And it's be a quick lesson to the spread of power of Yahweh Bahashim Shai on Hurricane Milton and the devices of Satan, man. Geoengineering. Now, um, we just had Hurricane Barrel, Hurricane uh Haleen, Hurricane, now we got Hurricane Milton. Would you go into the word Milton? It also goes to millstone. All right, something that grinds to a powder. Right, that's, that's heavy in itself. But in any event, um, it's very spiritual in itself. But in any event, these are the devices of Satan, man. All right. Satan incarnate, which is Esau Edom, the white man, because we know he has um, ways to manipulate the weather because this storm is the strongest in over 100 years that they're saying. All right. They, they, then they're saying this is the strongest sto storm ever. OK. And um, it grew overnight from a tropical storm to a category four hurricane. Now it's a category five. And I make sure the clips are made not. All right. Alexa. Right, what is Alexa? I'm gonna look at, I'm, we don't know what it is, but I wanna see exactly 
you know, it's basically like AI. All right, but Alexa, all right, what is Alexa, right? <clears throat> Alexa, okay, is a virtual assistant technology largely based on a Polish speech. Yada, yada. So it's virtual assistant. It's a virtual assistant technology. So it's virtual is uh, it's AI basically. You speak to it. Hey Alexa, ask your question. You ask it a question and answer the question. Things that are next, right? So someone asked Alexa before Hurricane Milton even became a hurricane, okay, uh, or before it, uh, basically before it hit Slocky, before it hit the coast of Florida, all right. They asked, what was Hurricane Milton like? So I'm going to play that clip, as a matter of fact. And it spoke in the past tense. And it speak that it could do this. It said in the past tense, it did this. So meaning what? It was already written in the data system. All right. They already had it lined up in the data system to bring this, this thing forth. Understand this. Esau been moving heavily in this October, in this October month. With elections coming up next month, they need the October surprise. All right. So then they mentioned um, T attacks happened in October 7th because that was two days ago. So we still waiting to see what happens with that. Um, they the different hurricanes hitting back to back to back. All right. Um, amongst other things, too, a lot of uh, a lot of different things popping off. Right. Uh, let's see. So from there, uh, Salakia, what I'm going to do is read this right here. Right. Article Hurricane Milton. A lot of, this is not too long. Hurricane Milton. All right. See what they got. See what they got. So it's 11 minutes ago. Washington Post. It says Hurricane Milton expected to make landfall in Florida with dangerous storm surge. And they also talking about evacuations. All right. Um, and of course, prayers, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai is going up for the beautiful Akim and their families down there in, in um, Florida, in that region. Any region that's in the um the path of this um storm, okay, and um we know Yahweh Bashim Asha will be with those brothers and their families, their loved ones, all right, their wives, their children, okay. Any hopefully elect members up there that trust and believe in Yahweh Bashim Shai, you best believe he gonna he gonna guide and protect them, okay. Now that's mainly for judgment for the wicked Israelites in that region, but also Esau is, is causing more, you know, destruction, okay, and um. And it's a lot going on too with the whole Hurricane Helena just passed. That hit a lot of sundown towns in um the Car the Carolinas, mainly North Carolina, and um you have uh, FEMA saying they don't have enough funds for that. So now FEMA not got enough funds for this. So we know what this is gonna lead to. All right, this is gonna lead to um more, you know, uh chaos. All right, more uproars and up. Hey, they have money to feed the migrants and how is my? They don't have money to feed their own American people. All right. Make sure we're straight. And also information came about about the lithium in North Carolina. So that's why they, they get ready to bulldoze everything in, a, in that path. They don't care about the people that could have survived. They're still stranded under the debris. They're going to just bulldoze it all because they want to dig and get that lithium. Because that lithium is a, is a key element for their smart cities, for their new technology of AI. All right. That's the lithium batteries inside these um, e-bikes and e-scooters. All right, it's that lithium they getting. So they found a large uh, sum of lithium in North Carolina, and they in and, 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 and parts, and they want it in the mountain regions. They want it. And so there's a rumor that they let open a dam. All right, and with this Hurricane Milton, we know they manipulated him through the uh, through the harp systems. This is swatted the most out on the left hand side. This been not too long. The video clip you seen in the intro. That's that says most of it is most of the uh, news update. Right. So let's get Nahum one and three. The Lord is slow to anger and in great power and will not at all acquit the wicked. So ultimately, all these judgments are for the wicked. All right. And the wicked uh, uh, ultimately is Esau Edom. He's the wicked, but you have wicked Israelites that he's punishing as well in these last days. And he then is going to catch that straight bullet. It says the Lord have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. And ultimately, these heathens deserve it as well for what they did to Israelites as well. They all, they all played a part in our downfall. Right. But it says the Lord have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. Hurricanes, a storm. It starts as tropical storms and it forms hurricanes. All right. It says, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. So the most is bringing these things, man. And he's using his left hand. Let's get Isaiah 10 chapter to bring this thing. Isaiah 10 and verse uh, 
5. O Assyrian, the rod of my anger. So the Lord used the Assyrians back then to punish the northern kingdom. And he's using the, um, these Edomites say to punish all the Israelites. You know, that's what's called Jacob's trouble. The devil coming down with that great wrath. He about to come down with holy hell, man. See, all these different things. He, see, his sword is not just, you know, guns, man. And, and daggers and spears and drones. And, and, you know, and not even just nukes. Nukes, is that's the ultimate, the nuclear missiles. But he has weapons. Yeah, his swords, but also his uh, scientific weapons as far as manipulating the weather, man. His dew system, that's a deep uh, uh, energy weapon, a direct energy weapon, if I'm not mistaken. The dew, you see, that they shot down in Maui, uh, uh, Hawaii. Okay? Because them people, they wasn't trying to sell their, their houses, man. Get up their land. You see, that was a direct strike. So Esau got weapons in all types of sizes, and now his main, you know, people that make these weapons are the scientists. That's Isaiah 54, chapter verse uh, 16. So he's the rod of the most high's anger. This is in the staff of, of their in the staff in their hand is mine and the nation. So the most high's angry. So he's using the wicked to bring forth what? The destruction. Let me see. Um let's jump, let's jump down to verse 15. Shall the axe boast up against him that hew therewith? So can an axe say, hey, I'm not trying to cut down this tree with a person that's hewing the axe? No. So the most high is using Esau as that axe. All right, it says, and so shall. Or shall the soul magnify itself against him that shaketh it, as if the rod should shake itself, uh, shake, shake itself against them that lift it up, or the st or if the staff should lift up itself, as if it were no wood. Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall send among his fat ones leanness, and on his glory he shall kindle a burning like a burning of a fire, man. Okay, let me see, jump. I was on something. Let me see. That's the point, right? From there, let's get this. So many scriptures I'm thinking about. Look at Psalm 17 and 13. And it reads, Arise, O Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword, man. So the wicked is Malachi, the first chapter, verse 4, is Esau Edom. All right. He's the sword of the Most High. He's been blessed with the sword. Or at least it's the, I think the sixth chapter, going to set out the red horse. Okay. You also get Genesis, the uh, 27th chapter, the blessing that Isaac gave to um, Esau. The sword. Okay, now a sword, like I said, is not just guns, things like nature, it's also his weaponry through his, te his technology. All right. The weather manipulation. See, Esau don't gotta come to ground zero and get his hands dirty right now. He's doing it the ways that you think is his natural cause, but he actually caused that shit. <laughs> you think it's natural, but it's geoengineered. Like the video was bringing down in the intro. Okay. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, man. But it comes to principalities against the spirit and the darkness, the rulers of the darkness of this world, man. Spiritual wickedness on high places. All right. The, the, the vibration of Satan on these Edomites, man. They're about to come down with that holy hell, which is the left hand of the most high, if you could receive it. You see? So I ain't want to do that too long, man. Just, you know, so much prophecy is going off. Hurricane uh, Milton and the advice of saying geoengineering. I was going to show that. I really was going to show that clip in the intro and breaking down what geoengineering was, but also get some precepts. You know, going to um, we're not uh, ignorant of his devices. No, look at the translation that Second Corinthians two verse uh, eleven in GNTD it says, "In order to keep saying from getting the upper hand over us, we know what his plans are." You see, so we know him doing all of this. He's he's bringing down the infrastructure of Babylon the Great because he has a great reset to to bring forth. So to have a reset, he got to put a, a a stop button. All right. To restart a movie, you got to stop it and go back to the beginning. So they want to knock this place down so they can rebuild, build back better. That's what their plans are. So they're doing it in different many ways, man, with these different hurricanes. All right. T attacks, they're going to start bringing forth. Cyber attacks has been happening. A lot of bank outages. It's so much they're doing. It's like so much happening that it's like kind of hard to keep up if you're not always on your watch. You got to constantly be on your watch. Okay. So we know what his plans are. We're not ignorant. Uh, Sirach, the fifth chapter, 15 says what? We are not ignorant of any matter. No, let me read it. I'm in love with that. Sirach 5, 15, and it reads, Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or a small. Okay? Don't be ignorant, man. You so about to do some major, major things, man. Okay? And um, just because that storm is not hitting the state near you don't mean something a different type of storm. It's not going to hit a state near you. 
he's about to come down with holy hell, man. All right, T attacks are popping off. Remember, October surprise. Things major gonna happen in this month leading up to the elect. This election is serious. All right, every four years they have some of this like October surprise. This this right here, they about to get crazy. So brothers, sisters, sincere, stay on your watch, man. Stay on your watch. Stay prayed up. We should be praying and fasting to to Yahweh Bashimah Shah God our power. All right, and uh, of course, throw the prayers up for the brothers on there in the uh, Carolinas, as well as uh, the, the uh, those in Florida. All right, and anyone in the path of Hurricane uh, Milton. All right, because it's gonna get deadly, man. You see, and um, just beginning, like Lord Yahweh Shah say, all these are the beginning of sorrows. So in closing, giving all honor, glory, and infinite praises to the Heavenly Father Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Chakudash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations. Like Scott is broad, pushing his truth and sincerity. With Adam C. Shalom, Wapapapal Shalom.